In many ways, the United States citizen today is a little like the frog in the pan of hot water that's sitting on an open flame on the stove. The frog just thinks it's getting a little bit warmer. The frog does not know that sooner or later that pot is going to boil. Everyone knows that the energy supplies are getting tighter. The cost of gas is going up. The cost of heating a home is going up. As the price of energy of all sorts just continues to creep up, what's going to happen is a relatively quick diminution of the quality of life in this country. It is a unique situation in that it is one time where we really need to innovate to find a way to get energy from sources other than the conventional fossil fuel resources that are making our planet uninhabitable by our civilization. This is a global time of which science and engineering has the chance to really save the day, to really develop a solution to a problem which is going to impact all of us. The Advanced Research Projects Agency, ENERGY, or ARPA-E, is a new office within the Energy Department, and its job is to fund the kind of transformative technologies that could really change the way that we use energy. One of the important things about ARPA is historical. I mean, it started, of course, as DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Administration, the idea that, you know, someone had to fund military research. It was the place the internet came from. It's the place that GPS came from. Uh, very leading edge kinds of experiments that probably no one would have funded back in the 70s or 80s, yet they became absolutely essential to our commerce. Uh, that's what ARPA is doing now with energy. It's a kind of moonshot approach, with the understanding that many of the projects won't pan out. But the ones that do could pay off hugely in the future and change the way we use energy forever. So our job is to really catalyze uh, energy breakthroughs and really identify the, the, the Wright brothers and the Jonas Sox of the 21st century. And these are the pioneers of the 20th century. Well, we want to find them for the 21st century and invest in their breakthrough ideas. And by its very nature, these are risky. But if they're successful, uh, they could change the ball game. We're out in the Bay Area to check out two companies that are funded by ARPA-E. The first one is Bioarchitecture Labs. We're in Berkeley outside of Bioarchitecture Labs and they're architecting new kinds of microbes that can turn seaweed into fuel. Biofuels have the potential to provide clean energy. But the big question is where and how can we grow them when most of our farmland is dedicated to food production? The scientists at Bell think they've found a way to bypass that problem. The goal, of course, is to try to replace a greater and greater percentages of uh, the fuels we're now using in our cars, the liquid fuels, for uh, use in tomorrow's fuels. And it can be done. There is technology that can be developed today. The key to the implementation of this technology really is the source of a cost-effective raw material. And Bal believes that seaweed presents a, a viable option for making that happen. We're looking at how to create biofuels in completely new ways. What they're doing is to take kelp, and that is very exciting because you've got plenty of shoreline to grow kelp, and they've figured out a way to make fuel out of it. You know, we are really it's about inventing the future. They're currently working on growing seaweed on a commercial scale in Chile. Here in the Berkeley lab is where they figure out the science of breaking seaweed into fuel. Uh, here we're really interested in developing the microorganisms that can transform the seaweed into something more useful. Uh, we're doing genetic engineering, we're doing process engineering, and we're really trying to understand the chemistry of the sugars in seaweed and the way metabolically they can be broken down and fermented and turned into something valuable. The, the energy challenge that the world faces is huge. 
I personally believe that success over time is going to take a lot of solutions. Seaweed is clearly going to be one of them. We're headed across town to Alameda, where Makani Power, another project funded by RPE, is working with wind power in a whole new way. We'll meet Corwin Hardin, one of the founders of Makani, and find out more about what they do. This operates on exactly the same physics as a wind turbine. So if you imagine a wind turbine that's got those blades, it's rotating around. And if you look closely at a wind turbine, the center part of the blade is really not doing that much of the work. In fact, most of the work, most of the energy production is done at the tip. Okay. And so if you could imagine taking that tip of wind turbine off and flying it around in a circle, it looks very much like how this wing operates. Unlike a traditional wind turbine that harnesses wind energy from about 100 feet, Makani's new design lets them capture the energy of the wind where it's most powerful, miles in the sky. And then through a tether, they transmit the power to a base station, then onto the grid. So this technology has the opportunity to really change the way that we derive energy from the wind. We make a technology which is much lighter weight, much lower mass, and that means it's much more scalable. So it's lower cost, it generates energy at a much lower cost, but also it's easier to make more of this technology and deploy it quicker than conventional wind turbines. And with this technology, we can very quickly and cost-effectively access that huge resource. So we are looking to invest in technologies that are breakthroughs, that could uh, you know, create you know, industries that do not quite exist today. Makani Power is a very innovative technology. It could reduce the cost of offshore wind significantly. And that's the kind of ideas that we're investing in right now. In a way, uh, we have been dining out on the inventions of ARPA from basically the 70s and early 80s. This is time now to have a new set of those technologies. Because look at, look at what the internet built for the United States. We are absolutely the world leaders in that technology. We need exactly the same thing in energy. And that's why this is, in a sense, a new round of innovation that quite literally could, just as the internet, it could feed 30 or 40 years of, of industry and innovation in the United States. We are looking for the inventors of the 21st century who are taking high-risk ideas, but we're not investing just for the sake of risk. We're asking the question, we'll take the risk as long as these things, if successful, will change the ball game and ensure the U.S. has a technological lead in the world and can have massive economic growth in the future. Those are the ideas that we're investing in. There's no doubt our energy needs in the future will be one of the biggest challenges we've ever seen. Even though the ARPA-E projects are high risk, if even one succeeds, it could be the answer that we're looking for.